hardware people. That's good, I get to talk to, to fellow hardware folks. Normally, we, uh, I talk to high school kids, so it's really good to sort of like talk about some chips that I'm using you might want, not even know what they are. So before I get into uh, the neurotechnologies we're using, I'm gonna start first by explaining a little bit about the brain uh, to fellow engineers. The, uh, the brain is made out of 100 billion cells, and these cells are called neurons. And these neurons are a specialized cell that have a little arm that reaches out to other cells. And down these, uh, this is the special arm, it's called the axon, and down these axons, uh, they send an electric message. And this electric message is very special in neuroscience. It's, it's called a spike. And what happens when it reaches the end, it causes the next cell to either fire or not fire. And we encode all the things we know, everything that we love, everything that we think, everything that we know. Every, everyone in the world is encoded with these little spikes. And these spikes look like this. They have a very unique waveform. And so what I try to do is I try to go out and try to teach people uh, how the brain works by recording spikes. And so my background is, this is me a couple years ago in uh, getting my PhD in neuroscience. I would sit there for hours and hours and hours at a time looking at spikes on a screen. This is, uh, these are electrodes into a rat. And I was using very expensive equipment over here on the right. Uh, and it's, it's kind of silly because you, you guys have probably never heard what the brain sounds like before. Uh, and you really, the only people that really get to do that are PhDs in neuroscience. And the equivalent would be, if you wanted to look through a telescope, you'd have to get, uh, go into you know, astrophysics and study for six years and pound on professor's doors and eventually they'll let you look through the telescope. But today you can actually just go down and buy a telescope and look through the heavens and, and you don't really need to have that much technology. You just need to buy this little kit and you can see the stars, the heavens, the moons. Uh, so around the time I was doing my PhD, I was involved in schools, going out there and teaching about the brain. And I wanted to do what I was doing in the lab with this high-tech equipment and sort of bring it into the, to the schools. And so at the time, I, my then lab mate, Tim Marzul, and I came up with a self-imposed engineering challenge, which was, can we record a spike for less than $100? And so we set about this for one summer. And these were the prototypes that we came up with after about, about six or seven months of work. We had things that could hold electrodes in place. And that's the Tim over here on the right. And we had a, the rudimentary form of a circuit that could actually do the same thing that our $40,000 equipment in the lab could do, uh, but it was costing a lot less than that. We actually hit our price. I think our final bill of materials was around $30 for this, for this first uh, prototype. Uh, and so when we showed it off, we were telling, we're just, we kind of just did it to show people like, hey, how cool, how cool this is. Uh, and people kept asking us, you know, when can we buy one? I want to buy one. I want to bring it back. I want to do outreach. I want to show my kids what I do. I want to like, and so you get this enough times and we decided we're going to form a company. And so that's how we started Backyard Brains. We're an uh, open software, open hardware company, uh, open education, open book, open finance, open everything. Uh, and so we started this company with the goal of producing a kit that you can take home for less than $100. And so this is our prototype on the far left. I have a pointer here. Uh, that was our original prototype, and we moved out here to today. Uh, we have what's called the spiker box, and the spiker box allows us to record the brain of insects, and the brains of insects are very, very similar to the brains of humans. And so by learning about insects, we can actually learn a little bit about our brains. And so I'm going to do an experiment right now uh, to show you how it works instead of just telling you, and I'm going to use a cockroach. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to anesthetize the cockroach, all right, and then I'm going to remove his leg, and then we're going to place electrodes in here. Remember I said that the neurons communicate with electricity. It's about one millivolt of electricity, and it's enough that we can amplify it and sort of send it in through a speaker and you actually hear it. You can actually plug it in. We wrote up an, an app for your iPad so you can actually see it as well. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to switch over to the camera so you can, so you can see the live demo. Okay, there it is. So what I have here is... I love live demos. Okay, so, <laughs> so what I have here is a cockroach. As you can see, he's very much alive. And I'm gonna place him, I'm gonna place him in ice water. So what's gonna happen when he's in ice water, he's gonna, his neurons are gonna start to slow down because as things get colder, things start to move slower. 
when things move slower, basically the ion channels inside the cells can't open. When ion channels can't open, the cells can't fire. When cells can't fire, you can't feel pain. You also cannot move. And so this very active cockroach in a couple seconds will be completely uh, comatose <laughs> and will be in a, a sort of a uh, what we call anesthetized. It's a reversible reaction which causes neurons to stop communicating. Uh, so we do this because for the same reason you would get this done to you if you were going in to get a surgery. You don't want to be awake when someone's cutting into you. So when we remove this guy's leg, I'm going to uh, actually have him not be moving. Okay, so we're slowly going down. <laughs> All right, so what, what, what are the neurons that we're going to be recording from? These are within our hand, uh, our, all around our body, we have these sensory cells. These sensory cells project to your spinal cord, which then go to your brain. Uh, and then by, when someone taps you on the shoulder, you feel that because you have a little pressure sensor cell inside your skin that's sending that message to the brain. And so with this cockroach, we're actually gonna be recording from those neurons and listening into that conversation that's happening. All right, so he seems to be anesthetized. So if you bear with me, I'm going to remove one of his legs and then I'm gonna place it into our invention. I just want you guys to be able to see this guy. So that right there is a cockroach leg. And on this cockroach leg, there's all these little hairs and barbs, just like we have hairs on our legs. And, and so what we're going to do, we're going to put the pins in, and we're going to listen to what the cockroach sounds like. So what's happening, I'm picking up interference, and so we have a Faraday cage, which allows us to put a shield around here, which grounds the, uh, the device, and so we won't be picking up what sounds like to be Mexican radio. Okay, so I'm gonna listen, to, I'm gonna have you listen to this, and I want you to tell me if you guys hear anything. To me, I'm an electrophysiologist. This sounds like the most beautiful sound in the world. This is what your brain sounds like right now. And so what we can do, we can do an experiment. I said earlier that these are cells that are touch responsive. And so if I touch the leg, we should be able to see if we get a response. Okay, so what you're listening to, and, I, and I'm going to be setting up some demos in the back in, the, in a bit. Uh, what you're listening to is actually what neurons sound like. I can show you what they look like, but in, in lieu of time, I'll, I think I'll save that for a little bit later. And with these very simple preps, we can, we can then start to teach messages about how the brain works. And so uh, one, one thing that we know about neuroscientists is that the, those little spikes are encoding messages. And so when I brush the leg, you see in the lower left-hand corner, uh, you see an increase in the firing of action potentials or spikes. And so this is how information gets encoded in the brain. Uh, the, more, the harder you press on something, the more spikes there are. It's called rate coding. The rate is encoding the information. This happens for all of our senses. And so we, it's because it's battery operated, we can bring it around. This is the person seeing a spike for the very first time. And so you can see that it's a, it's a spontaneous photo. He's like, he's really getting to understand how the brain works. Uh, we can bring it around. We've shown 16,000 people around the world the, what a spike sounds like, how the brain works. Uh, and it's battery power, you can bring it anywhere. This is us bringing it on a, uh, a Delta airline plane a couple of years ago. And we just put up a sign, come to our seats, you can learn about neuroscience. Uh, but it's not, just, it's not just a spike code. We have, it's, we're open education. We have a wiki page where people upload experiments. And you can sort of develop your own ideas based on our platform. Uh, there's another experiment, neuropharmacology. You can take a cigarette, get the nicotine out. Nicotine binds to acetylcholine, and you can do uh, neuropharmacological experiments. Uh, this is a remote-controlled cockroach. Uh, the world's first commercially available cyborg came out of uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan last year. And I'll show you how it works. We took a hex bug, we hacked it, 
and place our circuit board on top, which turns the normally the DC motors into the axle potential, the spikes that the brain is looking to receive. Uh, so you rear it as a backpack, and what happens is you take the output of those spikes and you feed it into the antenna lobe of the cockroach. Uh, and so when the cockroach is walking, uh, he's going to feel these sort of spikes going in there as so electrical impulses, which will trigger a response that's in innate to the cockroach. And you can see what happens when I press play. All right, so now we put some LEDs on there. So you can see it's twisting when it, when it sees the light. And you notice it's going in the contralateral direction, the opposite direction, because it thinks it's running into something even though there's nothing there. And so people will always say, oh man, this is really cool. But actually the, the cockroach adapts within about five minutes. It just doesn't care anymore. It just kind of moves out. And then that's actually a backpack that you can take off and we put it back into its home cage and he just does whatever cockroaches do. All right, so now we're working we're working with some students in Santiago de Chile, and we're uh, converting it, so now we have Bluetooth control, we pair it with your iPhone 4, uh, and then you can actually control your cockroach. Uh, some new projects we're working on are optogenetics, this is using op uh, uh, options in the brain to control, to control with light. So we're working with more students, and we have our own version, of DIY version of the optogenetics kit, and this is data that shows that it works. We can stack them up, you can get multiple channels, you can actually see this is a, 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 this is a earthworm with two spikes in two different locations, two pins in two different locations. You can actually watch as that, as that axon fires a spike and passes it all the way down. We sell everything as, as a kit, so it's for less than that, and for less than $50, uh, we have students that actually put together and build it themselves, uh, and they learn a little bit about analog electronics and ancient tradition, you know, no longer done, or probably around people around here. Uh, and then students get to do that, and then uh, we are an open books company as well, so all of our finances are available for trying to get other scientists and engineers to start open hardware companies, to, so you, you can actually make some money. Our burn rate's about 30K, so we're getting there closely. Uh, and now we are actually starting to, we first got into professors' labs, then into the college and, and sort of smaller universities, and now we're starting to see an uptick in high school, so we're actually beginning the neural revolution. So I just want to say thank you, and uh, these are the people that work with me to sort of make this happen. Thank you.